doing great. And you're like, thank you. You know, um, it's tough to follow guys in big monster suits. Yeah, I was wondering why you are not wearing an elephant suit. Well, you know, those guys, just, just for the record, uh, those are fake suits, but this is all real right here. <laughs> I love to do this. Uh, who uses Evernote? <laughs> 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 yeah, it looks like you have some market uh, penetration uh, here. Well, the good news is uh, it, it's every time I go somewhere, particularly in Europe, uh, and uh, it's less than, uh, fewer people use us here than in, in Japan and in the US, so it's actually nice that there are still big parts of the world where it isn't a lot of market penetration. Still have a long ways to grow. Hmm. So you just had news, uh, when was it, last Friday on uh, funding? Yeah, yeah, we just announced uh, yet another round of funding uh, on, on Friday. We took uh, $85 uh, million. Dollars. Um, $85 million? Dollars? Yes. Yeah, it, it's really just part of, of the strategy that we've set out. I think the first time you know I was here, probably two years ago, we talked about this. We're we're kind of trying to minimize the the, the drama in Evernote. We we want to build a hundred year company. We want to stay within our comfort zone. Uh, so we uh, we want to just make sure that we're always doing things that we're comfortable with. So we did uh, another round. Um, it's actually mostly secondary. So about 75% of this money goes to existing shareholders and investors. Tell me so about that. Why would you do a secondary? Well, you know, you want to, we want to give people the opportunity to sell some of their shares. Oh, must the be employees, I guess. Well, there's some, some early investors, yeah. you know, angel investors, some of the employees. The idea is, um, uh, uh, well, th th it really does two things. On the one hand, when, when we go public eventually, and that won't be for many years, but eventually when... When do you go public? <laughs> Not for many, many years. Uh, probably but you have it, you're working on it. We're working on it. I, I would guess no earlier than, than three years from now. Uh, we're we're, oh, trying to, we're wow. kind of trying to put it off. Uh, we think like this is the most fun period in the company. You know, when you're too small, you can't really take too many risks. It's hard to have fun when you're just a tiny startup. Um, when you're a big public company, you get punished pretty severely for, for taking risks and failing. So I think right now is kind of the, the sweet spot, right? The Goldilocks moment where we're, we have some resources, but we can still do kind of crazy things and uh, uh, take some big risks. And then once we sort of work that out of our system, I think we can go public in a, in a few years. Did you, did you get the valuation public of that funding? Uh, it was a little bit higher than the last one, so the last one was a billion dollars. This was a, a little bit higher than that. Uh, but, you know, we never chased the valuation. Every year I have Phil, you know, on stage, and it's always <laughs> like from 100 million to 300 million to a billion to more than a billion. To, uh, so yeah, I public, think the, what do you... The, last, the first time I came here, I think we had probably less than a million users. Um, and it's, it's, it's definitely grown, and the web's been a great, a big part of it. So I'm always, always happy to be back. Plus, this is my once a year opportunity to wear stage makeup. So I can never <laughs> pass that up. <laughs> Excellent. So the funding uh, is interesting, but generally you share numbers with us. That's yeah. kind of a tradition as well. I know. You share numbers here with us, which are not shared with your board yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, do have, uh, I do have a quick update. Uh, and the, the, the basic idea at Evernote is we kind of figured, you know, the world is becoming more of a meritocracy, where, especially in tech, um, the best products have the best chance of winning. So we want to make sure that we have the best products, and the only way we know how to do that is just to build things for ourselves. Like we don't try to build products for, for people that we don't really fully understand because it's really tough to make that excellent. So our strategy is let's only build things for ourselves, and hopefully that'll make us successful. And as we get successful, we can expand who the definition of ourselves is, kind of as we just get bigger as a company. Uh, and that's definitely been happening. So I think the first time you and I met, we were probably 10 people. Uh, and now we're, we're much more. So we actually have How uh, many? Wow. We have more than 45 million users now worldwide. We have about 280 or so employees, uh, more than 45 million users, and that's growing um, really quickly. Yeah, you keep changing office as well. Yeah, we just moved into a nice new headquarters in Redwood City. Are you City. opening international offices? Yeah, we have eight, we have eight offices uh, outside of the US, uh, which, has been, which has been great. Uh, and really, that's what helps us expand who we are, like our definition of ourselves. It used to just be a few guys in Silicon Valley. Now it's a lot more people all over the world. In fact, uh, we just, uh, we, I just counted, and um, we actually have 10 countries now that have more than a million users each. I don't see France on this one. I, say la vie. It's not, it's not here yet. Uh, almost, but not here yet. But we do have 10 countries with the, the, you know, our, our million user country club. Very, very exclusive country yeah, club I, here. I would understand why China would be bigger, right? But I'm but, uh, not sure about Spain. Right? France is close. It, it is weird, right, that Spain's right? got a million users and why France doesn't. Why would Spain be there and not France? Um, you know, it's just, uh, uh, it's, it's, 
everything we do, we grow organically. So we don't really do any paid user acquisitions. So it's not like we have you know, big marketing programs in some of these, right. like big advertising programs. We have no spends. marketing program. We have no, well, don't well, tell our marketing guys, but, but yeah. No, uh, Andrew, I apologize. <laughs> yeah. We have no paid marketing. The, the job of our marketing department is to understand our users and to get them to. I to meant you don't have advertising campaigns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so it all just goes by word of mouth. So um, you know, I, I went to Spain a few years ago and met with a bunch of mostly food bloggers, and it kind of took off from there. So France is close by. I think France is about 800,000. So it'll be in the Million Club within Can the next. Can you guys get him to a million just for the sake of you know <laughs> having you uh, in a country where you have a million? But Korea got there like within like a few months. Like we launched in Korea, and then it was more than a million users. Like. Wow. almost overnight. Wow. And, um, so this idea of kind of who we are keeps expanding. It's been, it's been international right from the beginning. How much is Japan compared to US? Because uh, I know you guys are, uh, you feel cannot walk in Tokyo. You're a rock star, right? Well, there are books, I think there are 20 books. There's or like 40 something books. 40 books, yeah. about ever not. And, uh, so it's a religion there. <laughs> I now write a column for, for Nikkei Business, so the big business journal. So I, the, the one place in the world where I write a column is it's in Japan. Wow. Um, but my goal, actually, I do have a medium-term goal for Japan, which is I want to be doing whiskey ads in Japan. I want to do like the full Bill Murray. I want to advertise whiskey. And next time you come to Tokyo, I want there to be like a giant billboard of me, you know, advertising a whiskey. Okay. But it hasn't happened yet, so we're working on it. I can't wait. Um, Japan, yeah, Japan is about 20% of our users. It's been really successful. Now China is growing even faster. Um, but the, the, the idea here is, is, I think none of this would have happened had we not been building something for ourselves. Like if we really tried to do something that we thought the market wanted, uh, I don't think we would have this, this kind of results. Which is, I, I know always your best advice for entrepreneurs is build for yourself. Yeah, yeah. and it's, uh, it's really paying off for us. And the other thing that's changing about who we are, and when we actually look at our users, is we see that it's a very professional group. So 66% of our users use Evernote at work already. Um, but 91% of those are using it for, for, for data collection, for knowledge building. Which is very interesting because you really started as a consumer product. Exclusively a consumer right. product. And we never, we never really tried to get into business, but most of our users were using it at work. In fact, only 15% got Evernote from their, from their job. So 85% just brought it in unofficially. And of course, we use it ourselves at work to run which, Evernote. Which is the best way to spread in a company, right? right. In a and, corporation. And we, we run Evernote on... Evernote, so it's still just part of the philosophy of building well, the it the entire web is running on Evernote. That's kind of scary to know, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, it works. <laughs> yeah, it works. It's amazing. Uh, so we are... Uh, so, so we're actually taking this to the next logical step, and so today we're actually breaking news. So, so at the web, we are announcing for the first time, today uh, we are launching uh, Evernote Business. Oh. So this is uh, available... Today, uh, right available now. right now. As soon as I get off stage, we're going to push the button, or maybe somebody's pushing it as we speak. Uh, Congratulations. Now. What, what is you. it? Uh, so world premiere at the web, Evernote Business is now live. Yep. Congrats. Uh, you know, we were really thinking about this in terms of business class. You know, like the, the phrase business class, it means something totally different Like when you're talking about travel and when you're talking about software. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about travel, business class means it's kind of nice. Expensive? Well, at least nicer, right? Nicer yeah. than, than the normal. Like you get upgraded to business class, you're kind of happy. When you're talking about software, business class means like it's crappy. Like business software tends to be pretty bad, right, compared to the consumer software. Uh, and we really thought that there's no reason for this. Like there's no reason uh, the same people who, who, who have wonderful experiences in their personal lives with technology, who are used to, you know, Apple and Google and Amazon giving great experiences, as soon as they show up at work, everything is kind of ugly and crappy and doesn't work very well. So we think companies, enlightened companies, need to uh, need to be able to provide their employees with experiences that are just as good as they get themselves. And so we really, we're trying to launch Evernote Business as a way for companies to really discover the knowledge that they have uh, uh, locked away and really activate that knowledge. Mm -hmm. The idea is, you know, if you use Evernote, um, and tens of millions of people are already using Evernote at work, but right now Evernote is kind of a, it's almost like a single player game. Like you, you, you use it with yourself. Um, the biggest request? Yeah, I wouldn't show, like, I don't know if you remember, I, I was showing on my phone Evernote all the time, like the previous years, you know, I can't do that anymore. Yeah. This is just like my, my entire life, isn't it? Right. Including very, like, confidential stuff, so. But exactly, and so the biggest request we got is, for, is to have a better co-op mode in Evernote. You know, people want to play Evernote with their, with their coworkers, right, with their friends. You want to actually still get something done. So that's what Evernote business is. It really focuses on using it uh, collaboratively. Do you have... Can we see it? I'll show you a, a, a very quick uh, demo about a couple of things. Um, so that's the Evernote desktop. Yeah, so this is our new Mac version. Mm -hmm. And you know, we have 
we decided about a year and a half ago that we'd have three guiding philosophies for all of our products in the future. Uh, so the, the, the main one is that everything has to be beautiful. Like we focus on experience first. Uh, we stop doing design by trying to figure out what features we need and then implementing those features. Yep. We really kind of focus on the experience. So we try to make it really great. So if people haven't seen our new Mac version, I'm really proud of this. I think this no, is I know. The, I use the nicest it's thing beautiful. we ever put out. Um, but then the second one is we want to make it much easier for you to, to uh, collaborate, for you to, 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 to do things, get things done with other people. So this is the Mac version. And when you, when you join Evernote Business, uh, you'll see you have this business library. Uh, and the, the company can put in uh, notebooks uh, from other people that it thinks are useful for everyone to have access to. So you can have your uh, HR policies, conference planning, whatever. And then this have is, uh, the web schedule. Yeah, and this is automatically accessible to all employees. But also when I look at my own notebooks, I now see that I have two different types. I have personal notebooks and business notebooks. Mm. And they're, they're very clear which is which, but they're always presented together. And anything in my personal notebooks stays my property. The company never sees it. It's still mine. But anything that's in business notebooks is much easier to, to share, to collaborate, and the company has administrative uh, um, control over that and continuity. So same software, but two types of content. Exactly. So you use the same apps that you're using now for Evernote, but it's a, you, get a, you get a business premium account. So it's basically a business class level account. But the really cool thing is it, 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 does this, it does this great thing where it tells you what information your coworkers have before you even think to ask. Right? So the idea is like, how do you know what your team knows? Uh, how, do you, how do you get that information, which could be super useful to you when you need it, but how do you, how do you get it without even having to, to think about, uh, about going and querying for it? So I'll give you an example. Um, so in Evernote, we basically take lots of opportunities to show you other information that's in your coworkers' accounts, even if I'm just taking a note. Um, well, so it's, it's back. Oh, it's back. OK, so let's just say I, I, I take a new note. Uh, so I'll say. Uh, you know, meeting with Loic, uh, and I'll just type uh, on stage at the web. And what will happen is this is actually in the background searching for related information for my coworkers. And you can see right under it, you see these three notes popped up. So it says, this is what your team knows about Loic and the web. And look at the three things on here. Well, one of them, for example, is uh, here, Geraldine's business card. Mm -hmm. So it says that uh, Jackie and my team knows who actually runs the web. And it's, you know, it's actually not Louis, it's Geraldine. And so I see the business card right there because right. somebody else had this note. And this even works when you're outside of Evernote. So it'll work in, um, when you're searching the web, for example. Uh, so if I just do a search for, let's just do a Google search for uh, the web 2012, um, I'll get the, I get the standard Google results. But then over on the right here, I see the related notes. Oh, wow from my account, but also from the business library and from my coworkers' accounts, right? Um, that looks so, like they like it. Yeah, so I can, see all of the, I can see all of the relevant stuff, right? And the idea here is it's sort of like, like we want to give you situational awareness on what your team knows. It's kind of like uh, you know, when you're flying a plane, which is something that I know you do a lot, and I do all the time, although only in video games. But uh, when you're flying a plane, like, it's kind of important for you to know, you know your, your rate of vertical descent, right? But there's not, like a, there's not like a control on the plane that you query. So like, oh, now I need to find out how quickly I'm descending. So let me like, push this button and wait for a bit, and the plane tells me. It's something that you just constantly have to know about. So the instrumentation is set up so that you, know, you just know. It's and, in your ambient and, vision. And you remember, feel like I told you never to tell anyone right, about that. <laughs> keep going. Exactly. Uh, but you, you, just, like, you, you, you have that information. And this is the same idea. And like, I don't have to say, oh, I wonder who on my team has this particular information, and then go out of my way to right. query it. When I, when I signal intent that I need to know something, like I do a Google search, Evernote now says, oh, let me see if there's relevant things in your coworkers' accounts. And it even tells you who they are. So it says, oh, this is from Jackie's account. So I could just ask Jackie, hey, I see you've got you know, this thing from, uh, from the web. So is it there? So it works when you're in Evernote. It works when you're in Google. It even works if you're just reading an article. So in our new Clearly, uh, our new reader, if, if you just read a, a web page and you hit the Clearly extension, this is what cleans up web pages. Uh, you can see yeah, it. Why did you do this again, the, the cleanup? I, I have to admit I don't use, use it. Oh, you, should you should check out the new version. It's really good. Oh. It basically it, it gets rid of all the distractions. Oh. But now with, this, now with Evernote Business, it actually puts in all the related stuff. So let's say you see a cool, you read a, a TechCrunch Something article. Something about Evernote. Well, yeah, you, so it, perfect. So you read this thing about Evernote, and clearly. It's like preparing my Q&A with you. Yeah. And, and then you'll see on the side your previous notes about Evernote. 
oh, or, or your team workers don't on know about any Evernote. story on the internet. Cool. Yeah. Well, from within your from within your or your team workers Evernote yep. accounts. So it's not just random stuff from the net. It's highly relevant things. So if you're if you know you're uh, let's say you're an investor, this works really well for for VCs and investors, and that's mm. not. That's not entirely accidental. Like we kind of thought about, you know, how would investors use this? Uh, you know, if you're an investor and you take a meeting with a cool company, as you're taking notes, you'll see if any of your partners have already talked to them. That that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. it's really for information, uh, knowledge discovery, and, and and unlocking knowledge. And that's what I think sets Evernote business apart from, you know, from from just storage. Like it's this isn't just a bit bucket from Dropbox. No, well, I think Dropbox has a re Dropbox. I think is a fantastic app which we use ourselves for sharing. Files. So you don't think you're competing with Dropbox? I don't think so. I think this is really, um, it's, it's really compatible. I have to admit, sometimes I'm confused. I use both, and I'm like, do I put it in Dropbox or do I put it in Evernote? Yeah, I, I use both as well. In fact, uh, you know, Drew and I are constantly talking about whether or not it makes sense to do something cool together. And, uh, oh, like merging? Well. The products. I think the companies are, <laughs> yeah. That would be a good uh, It would be like the monster uh, company. No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> It wouldn't yeah. make sense, Phil, you know? Uh, there's no way we could afford to buy Dropbox. And, uh, <laughs> there's no way they can afford to buy you? Uh, no, my ego is way too big. It just wouldn't, it just wouldn't happen. <laughs> would, be, would be interesting, though. But no, maybe, uh, maybe that could be the big announcement at the next. Uh, uh, sure. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. No, but I, I do think, actually, what this replaces. So I think Dropbox we're, we're really complementary to. If you look at like, what's the main competition to Evernote, I mean, the main alternative to Evernote I think is leading a miserable, disorganized life. Right? It's doing nothing. Like when we get our users, it's not like we're getting them away from any other product. We're getting them away from doing nothing, from just being sad all the time because they can't manage the information that's coming at them. And if you look at the technologies that we're replacing, well, maybe it's things like you know company wikis and intranets and, and inappropriate use of email. So it's very, very low-level stuff. I mean, that's 99% of the. You think this is going to get. decrease emails? Yeah. Uh, I think it'll decrease things like. Uh, like wikis and intranets. And where, and where is it going? Emails. Tell me the big picture, because you, then you could talk, you could think about, you know, Yammer and Salesforce Chatter and, you know, the collaboration tools. Mm -hmm. And y where do you stop? Because business is... Yeah, bus so the goal of Evernote has always been to be your external brain. Right? So it's to make you smarter. So we started with memory, but we really want to go towards making you smarter, helping you make better decisions. Uh, and so one of the other, one of the three principles we have, the first one is make everything beautiful, the second one is, is help you work together with other people, but not, not being social. Like, we're not a social site. We're not an expression platform. We're not where you go to say, this is what you like. No, because it's mostly confidential. It, it's about getting something accomplished. And you know, sometimes getting something accomplished is solitary work, and sometimes it's collaborative work with a small group of people. And we want mm -hmm. Evernote to be great for both of those. And we frankly don't care about large groups of people, because large groups of people don't really accomplish anything. Right. We really want. Evernote business is, is, is for us. It's for companies that kind of look like Evernote. So it's for small, medium, you know, fast-growing companies that trust their employees, that have knowledge workers. And the third principle is, is added intelligence. So we want the, the experience of using Evernote to feel like it's completing your thoughts. And so all of this like, related information, automatic discovery of what your team knows uh, is just part of that, 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 that third design. And the future is just a lot more of, uh, a lot more of, of these three things. And we are going to seriously disrupt email, although I think that's really going to be Skitch. I think the next few versions of Skitch are really going to get to a point where uh, it'll drastically cut back on you know, passive aggressive emails. How is that going for you? Because you launched, actually at the web, you launched um, a food app? Yeah, you food and, and, and uh, hello. Yeah. And we have big new versions of both of those coming out really soon. And then you acquired uh, Skitch. And we acquired Skitch, yeah. So how is that going for you? Because you have Evernote and you have all those apps which live their life differently, but store on the same cloud? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's going great. We have um, uh, Skitch went from about 100,000 users when we acquired them to about 12 million now. Uh, we put out a version of Skitch that, that I was really super excited about that I think took it to the next level, but we actually got a lot of pushback from hardcore existing users. We, we had changed too many things, and so uh, at first I was like, ah, you know, what do they know? But then when I looked at it, I actually realized, no, I think, I think like the users were right. I think we, like, we took for granted how much people were in love with it and how, how deeply they had integrated into their workflow. So changes that like, we thought would be better changes, they're still kind of disruptive. So we actually went back and, and said, OK, here's how we're going to make it non-disruptive for everyone. Um, but the, the, overall, the overall 
positioning of Skitch as a way to really, um, really just communicate visually is, is, is great. And it's going to tie really well into Evernote business. So the idea is like, what do businesses really need? Well, they need a better way to, to capture information and find it. They need a better way to know what the business knows. That's directly what Evernote business does. And they need a more efficient way to communicate. And that's what Skitch will do once it's integrated into into Evernote business. How do you iterate like the next, how do you decide on the next features on business? You get, you get those guys, you talk to them, you get feedback through Evernote? Yeah, you, you know, you we get a ton of feedback. Uh, and we've because kind of you, you moved away, well, yeah, actually, I was about to say you moved away from designing a product from yourself, but no, you're actually using it at Evernote as well. No, yeah, it's, that's, that's the end of it, is that we always just do it for ourselves. Yep. So we get tons of user feedback, and we always welcome it, and what we realize is, Users' feedback is really great at one thing and really bad at something else. User feedback is pretty bad in terms of telling you what you should build next. Like they don't really, users can't really articulate usually how to make something great. Right. But it is fantastic for telling you what you screwed up. So users are great at telling you what, what they hate, what sucks. And so we pay attention to all of the complaints very carefully and try to make it, uh, uh, try to make sure that people are in love with the app. We don't really use user feedback as much as setting the long-term strategic direction. That really has to do with what do we want to build. But uh, finding that balance is... is uh, and the, um, the App Store of Evernote, the trunk? The Evernote trunk, yeah, that's been exploding. We have more than 20,000 developers now. Uh, in, the new, uh, in the new Evernote, in uh, the new Mac version, there's, it's actually right, right in here. So you can go to the trunk, you can see there's several hundred things that we're featuring in all different categories, and there's about 20,000 developers. And we're now launching, in a couple of weeks, we're actually launching a, a Vervenote business API. So it'll be a, oh. an, a, a supplementary API for people who want to write apps for Evernote business, which uh, I think will be easy for our developers to monetize as well. So what's, what, what's the price, talking about monetization? Evernote business, uh, to upgrade yourself to, to business class at Evernote is uh, $10 per month uh, per employee. And what happens is if you're, if you're already paying for Evernote premium, then you stop paying and your company kind of pays for you. So you get this, you get this uh, super premium account. You get four times as much oh, storage. Oh, you get it free personally. You get it free personally, ah. plus you get it for the, for the company. So the company pays for you. And then if you ever leave the company, you I still have all your personal stuff. I was about to say, if you leave, it stuff. shrinks? Well, you still have all your personal stuff. So we oh, never I take see. that away from you. And your company doesn't see the personal stuff. But you do lose access. If you, lose, if you leave the company, you do lose access to all of the company stuff so that IT managers can control it. Great. I am um, super frustrated because I could go on for, uh, for a long time. But, um, oh, I have, I have a gift for you. Oh, this is actually very special. You are the first person <laughs> in the world to receive this outside of Evernote. That's exciting. Our newest product, which is uh, actually Evernote Business Socks. <laughs> so, uh, Evernote Business Socks. Evernote Business Socks. Sorry. Socks. Socks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, no, you said business software sucks, and we do Evernote business sucks, so I was confused. No, it's, it's, um, it's true. Thank and, you. Um, you know, when you, when you fly in business class, they always give you a nice pair of socks, so <laughs> I think this is important. And, and just in case you're wondering why Evernote decided to make socks, we have an instruction manual as well, because our goal is for our software, we shouldn't need a manual, but for the socks, you definitely, you definitely do. So this explains... So that's the manual for the socks. For the socks, yeah, because there's a lot of thought that went into these socks, so we want to make sure that... I have a uh, gift for you, too. <laughs> oh. Awesome. <laughs> Here's a Fitbit. Nice. That's this is the new, new Fitbit. One. I was just meaning to order this because they never sent me a free one. For some okay. Reason. Well, here we go. Well, we have a CEO of Fitbit coming tomorrow, so awesome. uh, we have a few of them. So other stuff. So the the socks are uh, super rare, very limited edition, but we do have a few pairs with us, and we'll be giving them away at our workshop later today. Yeah, I was about to say if you want to keep asking questions to uh, Phil, 4 p.m. Your workshop is up yeah, in the room, Yeah, 4 p.m., up in the third floor. We have a workshop, and uh, I'm happy to take questions and, and give away some socks. And, and it's uh, very easy to, to, to access. And, and you're here for the three days? Yeah, I'm here until Thursday. And you get tons of meetings. And I, I know uh, I know the web is a, is a very busy place so, but for you. But um, it's I always a milestone you, you for came us. because it's not, uh, you're, you're a busy guy building a $10 billion company in three years. That's what you said, right? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank That's you very plan. much, Phil. Thanks, Lee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um.